In this video, guys, I'm gonna show you how to create cinematic gimbal moves using the Insta360 Flow. Now, just because you got yourself a gimbal doesn't mean that your videos will automatically look great. It takes practice and know-how, and that's why it's a good idea to get to know your gimbal in order to get the most out of it. Now, I've been using the Insta360 Flow for quite some time. I've brought it with me to South America and captured some amazing footage with it. And this has become my go-to gimbal. The reason why I like this gimbal so much is its compact size. I can just fold it and fit it in my pocket, which makes it great to bring it along when traveling. What I also really like is the quick setup time. Whenever I'm done with a shoot, I can just simply fold it, take this off, put it in my pocket. And if I see something that I want to capture, I can simply mount it onto the gimbal, unfold it like that, and I'm ready to shoot. Now, I don't even have to fold it. I can just simply grip this part over here and it enters standby mode. So if there are a lot of great things to capture along the way, I can just simply press the trigger button and I'm ready to go. And for someone who's doing a lot of run and gun shooting, having this quick launch feature is really useful. And lastly, shooting videos on your iPhone can drain the battery quite quickly. And what's really cool is that the Insta360 Flow comes with a built-in power bank that allows me to charge my phone either while shooting or when I have it in my backpack. Now the Insta360 Flow has so many great features, but these are like my top three for choosing this gimbal. Now, before you even start using your gimbal to shoot videos, an important step is to balance your phone correctly on your gimbal. This way your gimbal will perform better and use less battery. So the Insta360 Flow uses this magnetic clamp. And what you want to do is attach it to the center of your phone. You wanna make sure that this camera sign over here aligns with the the lens here on the back. And what's great is that the clamp is large enough to use it with a case. The next thing is to attach it, which it does magnetically. And then I make sure the phone doesn't tip on either side. So it's tipping to the right. So I'm gonna push it more towards the left. And when I let it go now, you can see that it doesn't fall on either side. Now the motors of the Insta360 Flow are quite powerful. So if it isn't balanced perfectly, don't worry, it will still perform well. Just remember that it will use a bit more battery. So let's look at the camera settings. I'll be using the Insta360 app to shoot my videos, but if you want, you can also use the default camera app. The reason why you might want to use the Insta360 app is because it expands the functionality of your phone and you get features like deep track, which I will introduce you later. So once you open up the Insta360 app, the first thing I do is set the resolution to 4K, which gives me the highest quality possible and the frame rate either to 25 or 60 frames per second. If I want to create slow motion, I use 60, otherwise 25 frames per second. For now, I'm gonna leave it at 25. The next thing you want to do is head over here now, if you're a beginner, you can set it to auto, but I highly recommend you choose manual and get to learn the different settings. So first up is shutter speed. Because I'm shooting in 25 frames per second, I will set it double the frame rate, which is one over 50. And this will give me that natural looking motion blur in my video. Next up is ISO, which is digital brightness. I keep this at the lowest number, which is 100. This way I will avoid having too much noise in my image. Next up, which is really important, is your white balance. Make sure to not leave it in auto. And because it's cloudy, I can either choose cloudy or preferably I like to use the custom setting and set it manually to around 4,500. And you want to make it look the way you see it with your own eyes. So this looks pretty accurate. Next up, you want to go to your general settings at the bottom left and make sure to enable grid, which is the rule of third that allows you to set your composition properly. And I also keep histogram enabled, which is the graph at the bottom left. You want to make sure that the information is spread out evenly. You don't want all the information to be either on the right where the image is overexposed or on the left where the image is underexposed. Now, most of the time I leave the focus in auto, but if you want to lock, you can simply just tap hold and your focus is locked. So next up is the AI tracking feature, which is really useful, especially if you're filming by yourself. Now it doesn't only track humans, but also objects. Now to track an object, I can simply drag a box around it and you'll see it will keep it in the center. Now I can use the joystick to reframe it it will keep it that way. Now in order to track yourself, head up here to this icon and choose the very right. So now it's activated. I can simply 
make this hand gesture and it will now track and record me. So if I move left or right, it will follow me. And it has one of the best tracking features. So if I also move behind objects, it still continues to follow me, which is really great. And to stop the tracking and recording, I can simply hold up my hands and it will do so. So when creating your camera move, you don't want to be filming like this. What you want to do is slightly bend your knees and then walk heel to toe. This will give you way better results. And what I recommend you also do is hold the gimbal with both hands and there's a built-in tripod that you can extend and then you can hold it this way and this way you have more control when creating your camera movement. So by doing that you can avoid those up and down movements and make your footage look smoother. It's like holding a hot cup of coffee and when you do your camera movement, walk in a steady and constant speed and keep your camera close to your body. This way you can create a three point contact which will give you way better results. So let's start filming. I'm first gonna create an establishing shot and to do that, I'm gonna position myself over here and I want this tree to be the subject and for that, I'm gonna use the 1X and I've set the frame rate to 60 frames per second to then slow it down later. Now, because it's cloudy, the exposure changes constantly. So usually I adjust the shutter to avoid over or under exposure in my image. And I don't mind having that natural motion blur in my video since this will be slowed down anyways. Now I'm actually gonna start over here. So you can see I have some foreground and then I'm gonna slowly orbit around that tree and action. You do that really slowly. I'm gonna walk in a steady and constant speed, holding the gimbal with both hands. You have some nice sun flare too. All right, and that was it. I've set the gimbal mode to pan follow previously, but now I'm gonna create a detailed shot of this plant and sort of turn with the gimbal as I push out. And for that, I'm gonna use the FPV mode. So I can simply turn to choose FPV, or I can simply head up to the settings up here. In the follow mode, I can choose FPV. And what FPV mode does is it also unlocks the roll motor. I'm gonna position the lens close to the plant and start recording. Nice. So as for my next shot, I'll be filming this birdhouse. I'm gonna use the deep track feature to help me because I want to keep this centered in the frame. So I'm gonna shoot it in 60 frames per second and then slowly push in. Now what's great about the tracking feature is I don't have to focus on my composition and can instead focus on my camera movement. I'm gonna hit the record button and slowly push in. So as for my next shot, I want the camera to follow me and I'm gonna use gesture control to start recording and track me. Now it doesn't work in 60 frames per second, but because I don't plan on slowing it down, I've set the frame rate to 25 frames per second. And I've also placed the gimbal in a way so that I have some foreground over here to create some depth. So I'm gonna turn on gesture control, all right. And then simply hold up my hands. Okay, now it should be tracking me. All right, and let's go. So next up is a low shot of me walking. And for that, I'm gonna use the built-in extension pole so I can grab this part and just pull it out like that. And then I'm gonna place the camera upside down and I'm also gonna use the built-in mini tripod over here to extend the reach. And then I'm simply gonna film myself from the side. 
and I'm gonna film this in 60 frames per second. This way I can slow it down later. What I'm also gonna do is set it to pan follow. This way the tilt axis is locked. I'm gonna start recording and place the camera upside down in three, two, one, go. Now a cool way to check your shot quickly is to use this button over here and then press hold it and this will bring me to the last shot that I took. I'm gonna create a parallax shot. And for that, I'm gonna use, again, the built-in selfie stick and then angle this towards me. I'm gonna use the selfie camera for it. And what's great is that I can press the trigger button over here once to track my face. So what I'm gonna do while I'm walking, I'm gonna move my head to the right while the camera is moving in the opposite direction, creating that parallax effect. So I'm gonna shoot this in 60 frames per second. I'm gonna press the trigger button to track my face. Three, two, one, and go. So I was a little bit more creative. Now the reason why I've set it up this way is to get a higher shot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna film another sequence of myself walking, this time using the 3X, and let's see how that will look like. Okay, we are in business. So I found this spot where I could create a time-lapse of myself standing there in the field. There's a time-lapse function inside the Insta360 app. And what I'm gonna do is I want the camera to move from left to right. And to do that, I'm gonna tap up here and I've set the interval duration to one second, the record length, so let's do two minutes. And the time-lapse, it's gonna be a custom track. So this way I can tap the trigger button to set my start position, which is going to be this one. I'm gonna tap and then the end position will be, I think this will look nice. I'm gonna tap again. And then once I'm done, tap the record button and let's start with the filming. So for my last shot, I'm gonna film myself as I look up to the trees and I'm gonna push away the camera while doing so. so. I'm gonna set the shooting mode to slow motion. And what's great is that I can still use deep track to uh, track my face. So the idea would be to use the extension pull, press the trigger button to track my face. And then I would push out with the camera. Get up close and then look up there. Three, two, one. All right, folks, now that we have, whoa, don't fall down on me, man. All right, folks, now that we have all of our shots, let's put them together to create the final edit. So I hope you liked that video. There are really so many ways how you can use the Insta360 Flow to film a cinematic video. And especially if you're filming by yourself, the tracking feature can be very helpful and make your videos look more dynamic. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care, 
and I'll see you the next time.